Husky fans, welcome to episode 11 of NIU Weekly of the Fall. I'm Andy Garcia, alongside the Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics at NIU, Sean T. Frazier. And Sean, great to be with you again. Episode number 11. Time flies, but hey, we've got some positive news. Some good positive news. A MAC champion is in DeKalb and NIU and women's cross country. Congratulations. Program's first championship Head coach Adrian Myers. We had a, we had him on the show last week. We were good luck and, and congratulations. Great to see a MAC champion in NIU and the cross country team. No, it's huge. You know, we hosted this thing last year, 2019, and on our soil, and we came up a couple of points short in second place. And yeah, I felt for the ladies. I I felt for Adrian and Coach T. Berry. But uh, you know, to go on the road, especially with all the adversity, Andy. We yeah. got COVID 19. We've got you know, the possibility of no championship at all. And the ladies go down there and just take care of business in big time form. I'm so excited for him. I remember having this conversation with Adrian early when I hired him and we talked about that. He was unbelievably resolute that he was going to bring a MAC championship uh, uh, for the first of its t- uh, first, uh, first time ever for our program. And I just looked at him, I said, you know what? Are you sure you put, you'll put that in writing? Yes. Yes, uh, uh, Coach Frazier, I am. And so I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for the ladies, and I'm happy for the program, big time, big time for all of us. Great days. Yeah, you, you lose by two points on, on your turf last year. You win by three. Uh, Adrian Myers, MAC Coach of the Year, last year's individual champion, Ashley Tut, runner-up this year. Mackenzie Callahan takes third place to lead, to lead NIU and earn all MAC honors. Uh, uh, just a great, great accomplishment in what has been a crazy fall year. Uh, but for Adrian Myers and the women's cross country team, MAC champions, a, a great look uh, in the Holmes uh, Student Center too. It was it was, it was lit, lit up red afterwards. Hopefully that can be a tradition moving forward. No, it is. I, I got a text from uh, Matt Strab, uh, uh, a chief of staff for uh, President Freeman, who was also our former faculty athletic rep, and he's a big time supporter. And he said, "Hey, you know, we're gonna light the thing red." I said, "Ooh." And, uh, you know, it just looks really good. And that's school spirit. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's light that thing up all the time and uh, let's make it for special occasions like MAC Championship. You know, this is, this is my 10th. And, uh, you know, I hate it. It never gets old. <laughs> yeah, and on the, on, I think we'd be the leaders in the Jacoby Award, right? I mean, it's got to be the first uh, championship out. So NIU, right. Women's Cross Country, MAC Champions, congratulations to head coach Adrian Myers and the team uh, a lot of success moving forward and they got it this year uh, that's very cool as we also have two teams getting ready to play this week sean men's and women's basketball we're going to hear from mark montgomery later on in the show after thomas hammock who's going to join us for football but wednesday you got a double header in the combo again no fans but an opportunity for men's and women's basketball to get going not as many non-conference games uh, to get ready for the mac but you have a couple opportunities and it starts on wednesday for niu women they take on IUPUI and for the men they take on UIC. Yeah, it's good. Hope, hoops are here and you know despite all the uh, the COVID scares and everything else, you know, uh, kudos to our medical staff, our athletic training staff, uh, Northwestern Medicine, uh, and then obviously our student athletes and coaches, right? You know, we've had some last minute substitution here, there, and there, uh, but we get the games in. You know, uh, knock on wood. Uh, I know that the gals and the and, and the guys are, are ready to go, and uh, I can't wait to have some hoops. Nice. We'll talk basketball in a little bit with the men's head coach, Mark Montgomery, but let's bring in Husky head football coach, Thomas Hammock. Uh, a closer game, fell short just a little bit last week at Ball State, getting ready for Western Michigan on Saturday in Kalamazoo. As coach, welcome into the show. And uh, again, just fell a little bit short. Uh, saw improvement from this team. Again, the youth getting a lot of playing time. Uh, just comes down to a couple of plays, just fell a little bit short. Where'd you see some positives, though, coming out of that Ball State game? Well, you know, obviously, I think um, in the first half, I think our offense was able to move the ball uh, consistently. Uh, I, we scored points. Um, you know, the turnover was a, a, a big play uh, in the first half. But, you know, to come back and, and, and drive right down the field uh, and have an opportunity to get, you know, put points on the board, um, you know, there, there should have been a lot of confidence in the locker room. Uh, we, we have to continue to find ways in those uh, critical moments uh, to find a first down, uh, you know, our defense came out and got a turnover in the first drive of the second half, uh, and we got to put a drive together offensively to 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 re get the to regain the momentum, and uh, a lot of progress, uh, you know, on the practice field on Sunday, 
Uh, I, I feel like there was uh, uh, something happened um, where the light, the, the light bulb might, might be going off for some guys. And, and to me, I think that's very encouraging. Uh, we, we do have a young football team, but at the same time, uh, you know, we want to continue to progress and get better and uh, do the things that good football teams do. Sean? Yeah, so, uh, Coach, yeah, you're right. You know, every game, every practice is a growth opportunity. Um, that first drive, you know, I tell you what, you know, you know, getting the ball and then driving right down, you know, you know, break that down for us a little bit because it seemed like there was a lot of confidence, there was a lot of execution, there's a lot of things that went really well that also carried on even after, you know, that, uh, you know, that turnover. So talk to us a little bit about that drive and that offensive mindset. Yeah, I think, you know, for us, we made the commitment to, um, you know, try to streamline the plays uh, through the quarterback and he communicates to, uh, to the rest of the offense at the line of scrimmage. And I think, you know, they found it, that was able to find a good rhythm. The run game uh, certainly showed up that first drive, which, you know, anytime you can, your running game shows up, it takes pressure off the quarterback. And Harrison Whaley went out there and did a great job start, starting for the first time. Uh, he's going to continue to get better. Uh, and I think, you know, we have to continue to have balance uh, between the running game and passing game. Uh, and I think that gets us in uh, situations where we can, you know, take shots, uh, be a little more aggressive. Uh, and then obviously, you know, Tyrese Richie is playing uh, outstanding. Uh, and we got to keep him, keep him going in the right direction. I called it thunder and lightning on the radio last week, a little bit of Whaley and Collins, just a little bit of that one-two punch. Uh, and you mentioned Whaley. He continues to look good. And, 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 and Richie, that catches almost everything that comes to him right now. Is it just come down to just, as you said, just staying on the field, making it on third downs and, and keeping staying above uh, the, the, the yardage markers just to, to continue those drives? Yeah, you know, um, you know, right now we're not a, uh, uh, you know, a, a one-play 80 – 80 yard drive team right now. Uh, we certainly want to, you know, move in that direction and become a lot more explosive and dynamic. Um, but what we need to do is be able to get to, you know, third and one situation, third and two situations uh, where that's, that's uh, advantage to the offense. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we, we starting to uh, get a little bit of rhythm uh, offensively, you know, obviously, you know, we preach ball security from a, a, a fumble perspective, but we can't throw an interception. Uh, for pick six. I think that, you know, that changed the momentum a little bit, but uh, those those type of things happen, but at least we're not compounding the situation um, as we did in, in previous games. So, you know, we will continue to work ball security. Uh, we will continue to talk to the quarterback about, you know, protecting the football in all situations. Uh, and, you know, when you have a chance to go at 21-7, you know, that can change the dynamics of a football game. Defensively, Giving up a couple big plays is what's hurt. Huntley's going to get his yardage. At Ball State running back's a good player. Seemed like you guys slowed him down as much as you could. Is it just kind of down to maybe stopping some of those longer plays that, that kind of hurt the defense? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, for us, I mean, what we started six or seven freshmen, true freshmen. Uh, and the thing about it is, you know, we're not starting these guys because we want to. Um, but you know what? I feel very confident uh, in those guys going out there and competing. And I thought in the first half, uh, you know, I think they rattled. Uh, Ball State's explosive offense. Um, now we got to continue to, you know, put four quarters of football together. Uh, you know, you, you see Devontae O'Malley get a sack. Um, you know, other David Rayner played an outstanding football game. Devin Lafayette, uh, you know, Kyle Pugh until he got, you know, um, the, the uh, targeting call was playing well. So um, all those things, I think, you know, I feel very confident uh, in our defense, uh, you know, with, you know, this week we may have seven true freshmen starting, um, but these guys are going to compete. Uh, they're going to fight. They're going to scratch, uh, you know, for everything. And they're going to play hard for the whole game. And so, you know, to me, we will continue to grow and we will continue to get better, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball. If you haven't seen O'Malley uh, get the scholarship this past week, go on social media, go on Twitter. Another, and those, those videos don't get old when you see a guy who's worked his butt off get a scholarship and you can see O'Malley earn his scholarship in, in the video that NIU football had that's on social media, Sean. Absolutely. The good stuff overall. I think Coach said it uh, really well. You got young guys now that, uh, you know, we're more than halfway now. We're about halfway now of the seasons this, for the season, and there's a lot of growth and development. So I think those are good stuff. That's just good stuff overall. Coach, tell us about Western Michigan, the opponent on Saturday, uh, looking very good. 
Uh, they've got the wide receiver Eskridge, Offensive Player of the Week. He put up fantastic numbers last week. Uh, what should we see from the Broncos coming up on Saturday? You know, they're, they're a very explosive team, uh, both offensively and defensively. They, they create a lot of big plays. And so, um, you know, we have to play a team game uh, in all phases, offense, defense, and special teams. We have to play uh, complementary football. You know, we have to find a way to minimize uh, the explosive plays. I mean, they can get you in one-on-one -on -one situations with Eskridge, you know, and that quarterback, uh, you know, as a, as a redshirt sophomore, uh, he has a strong arm, uh, you know, not a overly dynamic runner, but he can, he can, he can put the ball in places where uh, he allows his wide receivers to make plays. Um, they have a big tight end that can, you know, control the point of attack. Uh, so, you, you know, we're going to have our hands full or on both sides. So, uh, you know, we got to put a game plan together. We, we've had some extra time, uh, got some, you know, pretty good wrinkles and, uh, you know, try to attack them and, and, and play complimentary football for four quarters. Well, Coach, hopefully the extra days can help off a little bit too. But we're looking forward to Saturday. NIU Western Michigan will have it on the radio Saturday morning as the Huskies head to Kalamazoo. Appreciate the time, and uh, we'll talk to you next week after the game. Appreciate it. That's Huskies head football coach Thomas Hammock. Sean, as you mentioned, team's getting better. Uh, you know, we want to see some wins. Those will come, uh, but they're taking on a very tough Western Michigan team coming up on Saturday. Hey, we go football to basketball. Men's basketball starts on Wednesday night in the Convocation Center. The Huskies take on UIC, and we've got Mark Montgomery starting his 10th season at the helm of men's basketball. He joins us now on NIU Weekly. And uh, Monty, great to see you. I've been out to practice. I've been seeing what these guys want, and, and, and it's been a while. They've been waiting to get on the court. Uh, you had the scrimmage on Saturday taking on each other, but the time is almost here, Monty, where you don't have to take on each other and you get to see another team on the court. You know, that's welcome because the guy, <laughs> when you go all the way back until, I don't know, it was March, um, rough summer, long fall, um, the shutdowns will continue. You know, so much things are happening, but uh, our guys are just excited to play another opponent. Doesn't matter if you didn't have any exhibition games, no scrimmages or anything like that. We just want to face someone else to get us ready for lead play. Uh, come mid-June, I mean, I'm sorry, mid-December slash January. Listen, I want you to be playing until mid-June. I mean, there's some, uh, you know, some you know, postseason activity happening. I'm just joking. Sean, go ahead. <laughs> no, goodness Lord. <laughs> hey, I'll take mid-June. <laughs> that, that's good stuff. All right. Bonnie, yes. Bonnie, let me ask you this question. <laughs> so, you got to, you got to, you got a new squad. You got new people. You know what I'm saying? You got some of the, some, some of the uh, veterans, but you also got a new squad. So talk to us about your personnel, you know, because I think that that's the biggest thing now. You know, obviously we stunted you by not having any type of postseason championship and everything else. You had one of the best teams that, that we've had in, in a while. You've done a great job at that. Talk a little bit about your personnel right now. What, what can we expect on Wednesday? You know what, coming away from the first scrimmage, it was a lot of balance. We probably had seven guys in, dip, uh, in double digits. You know, you're losing Geno German, who scored 2,000 points. So everyone is chomping at the bits. This is their chance. You know how it is? It doesn't matter if it's basketball, baseball, football. Next man up, our guys have been waiting for that opportunity that uh, it's going to be a little different team where it's going to be more player movement, ball movement, interchangeable parts. But we can go inside, outside. We still have Darius Bean and – Trendon Hankerson. They mm -hmm. scored over seven and a half points a game. Yep. Zaire Mateen can shoot to three. Tyler Cochran is a multi-dimensional, do, do a lot of different things, but we don't like our bigs. I always say our, our, our basketball games start inside out. You're going to get to know Kingsley, um, Adon McCoy, who is 6'11", Zul Queff, learn the new, Nathan Scott, learn the new names because they're big pitchers in what we're going to be doing in this uh, 2020 season and uh, and 21 season, um, very unselfish. But it always starts with defense and rebounding, and we will find a way to score. You know, our scrimmage. Some people say, "Well, God, well, I, well we only scrimmage for 24 minutes." I think it was 38, 36. I like those kind of games. <laughs> you know, if we take care of the ball, like I told my team, if we take care of the ball and don't turn it over, we'll score more baskets. But we're still getting the feel for each other. You know, not making any excuses, but uh, we have enough offense, but it's going to start on the defensive end, and uh, we should be tough as nails on that end. That's great. And, and Monty, you always talk about depth, needing depth at each position, and it seems like 
if this team can gel. And you mentioned Bean, and you mentioned Hankerson, Nathan Scott coming back. You've got some players coming back. Are you just looking for maybe some of the position, the depth, and none of the other positions to, to help you out with that? Well, you know, also we have uh, uh, Caleb Thornton. You know, he's yep. a lot like James. Quick. A quick point guard Ooh. that can make plays for himself and others. You know, but for this team to be very good, our balance, um, it should be at times is going to be a different leading scorer every day. And that's okay. Um, when I first got in the lead, I always said I, I, I followed, I wanted to follow Akron's plan where they had six and seven guys where they're tough as nails. It doesn't matter who scores. The only thing that matters is who wins the game. Now, you're going to need a lead and score and a leader rebounder. We're going to have that. But the player movement, the unselfishness, playing for each other, diving on loose balls, making the extra pass. You know, you need someone when the shot clock's running down. We'll find someone. You know, someone's going to make a shot. But uh, you need all the other intangibles where everyone's on the same string and they're in it for the right reasons. And uh, we're still developing that. It just doesn't happen overnight. But we do have five non-conference games to get us ready for conference play. And then we play 20. Uh, but we're going to have balance. It's going to be a lot of balance. You know, Andy, you and Bill going to be there. You guys are going to be hey, – hey, this is Trenton Hankerson. Then all, you know, before is like Geno Jordan's – Geno German scoring 10 straight. No, it's going to be Hankerson. Then it's going to be a dong. Then Nathan Scott for three. Zul Quef. So know the names. You guys have a tougher job. I call them by their nicknames. So, you know, know the names, and this is going to be a fun group to watch. Yeah, it's just different. Eugene German was the go-to guy last year. Anybody I've asked on the team so far I've talked to, including Media Day, Trenton Hakerson, there's been, they all said, I'm the guy who's going to take the last shot. Mm. I like hearing that. Somebody wants to take the last shot, they have the confidence to do it. And as Monty says, Sean, they have guys that are going to be able to do that. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Starting on uh, – Wednesday night, UIC, Monty, what should we expect from the Flames? Well, a tough opponent because they have a new coach. Um, They're a lot like us. They have uh, six transfers. They have uh, three from Division I and three from junior college. They do have some guys coming back. Um, Luke kind of came from the Big Ten. He started at Illinois State. Then he went to Michigan when they went on runs, even though he was at Texas last year. So it's a lot of uncertainties. So, you know, we're going into the game with heavy personnel, We watch their personnel. We're going to say we're going to defend how we defend our regular offense and then kind of go from there. But, you know, it's going to be up and down. They're not going to slow it up. Uh, We're going to run. They're going to run. Um, I think both teams will be very tough defensively. And we're going to look to find ourselves. You know what? We're going to pick up full court sometimes. We're going to play man-to-man 99% of the time. But we can sprinkle in zone, you know. And, and, And like I said, you know Trenton Hankerson right now, he's been making a lot of shots. Darius Beans, you have to count. I know going into the first game, I'm counting on the guys that was here last year to get us going. And then ease the new guys in. And then in the second half, we have figured it out. But uh, don't be surprised, Andy, come Wednesday, that it's five started. And then by the four or five-minute mark of the, uh, you know, after five minutes, I bring five more in. <laughs> it's that close. You know what I mean? Like football. Yep. They got their offensive team, they come their defense. It's going like hockey, those shuffles. We're going <laughs> to be five in, five out. So it's going to be fun. Sean? No, it's good. It's good. I, I think that, that I think the fans are going to be looking forward to that. You know what I'm saying? I think overall, and you know, now that we uh, are not going to be able to have fans in the stands uh, due to COVID, uh, we're going to be definitely uh, uh, listen, uh, listening uh, intently uh, for it. So give us a little bit, you know, as you kind of go through. You know, it's a uh, you know, uh, it, it is what it is. We got some new players, but you know, your your perspective. What's what's the forecast? What what can we expect uh, a little bit uh, as we kind of go from the non-con to the conference? Well, it, nothing should change from you know our philosophy from last year when we won 18 games and we we tied for the MAC West, where defend, rebounding, all the non-skilled things are important. You know, playing with great energy um, and toughness. So those things are a staple. You know, on the offensive end, we still want to get easy baskets. You know, we have an athletic team. We want to play inside out. We want our guys to get to the paint and create for others. So our staples are there. Now we got to go out and get our execution. You know, hey, it's a new player, Anthony Crump's on the wing. Let's see kind of like where he likes to get the ball. You know what? Uh, a, a Kingsley likes to get it on the right block. Zul likes to pick and pop on the left block. So as coaches, you know, we're watching – 
every practice, a lot of film. You know, sometimes you just need a couple games to get, you know, their feet underneath them and we can understand their tendencies. But we got to stay positive. No matter what, it's been some shutdown. Stay positive. Keep them focused. Andy already said it. It's a long season. Hopefully it won't go past April. <laughs> it's no major shutdowns. You know, That's like, true. Like, like you look at the football championship, they're still playing that national championship <laughs> game on the day in January. Unless something changes, hopefully um, this COVID thing will pass and we don't have any major shutdowns and we can still have our 20 games, play the conference tournament in March, and then we start March Madness. But, but it, you know, Everyone's going to have to be patient. Yeah. Just kind of how it is. Play a game. Someone else has a COVID. You know, like we're telling our teams. Let's just – I like um, Mike Tomlin's philosophy at Pittsburgh. Let's just be one and no in the week. So we got one game. Let's just be one and no. Let's take it one game at a time. Then all of a sudden, they done railed off 10 straight wins. <laughs> Let's go one and no and try to win the week and uh, get better at practice. And then, and then let's see what happens from there. I want to make sure I have this slogan right because you said it during media day. Is it stay positive, test negative? Is that what I did? I... That is not going to change. Stay <laughs> positive, test negative, yeah. and then adapt to whatever's thrown at us. You know, we can't control the uncontrollables, so, but we can't control our attitude. Our attitude can always be positive, and then do what you have to do to test negative. That means wash your hands, social distance, if you get a carry out, take it home, be in your room, and then come to practice and leave. So we have to do some things to uh, make sure we test negative. But uh, we're going to stay positive no matter what. Looking forward to it. Rainy Mac champ, Mac West champs. Again, no divisions this year. It's just straight 1 through 12, 20 games, as Monty said. And it's a sprint. See if the Huskies can get to the postseason. But first things first, Wednesday night, UIC. You can hear Bill Baker with the call on Wednesday night. Get to a radio, tune in. Uh, the Huskies mobile app as well. The Huskies and the Flames go at it Wednesday night. Monty, appreciate the time. I'll see you throughout the year, but good luck to start out the year. All right, thanks for having me on, guys. That's Thank Mark you, Montgomery, Huskies head men's basketball coach. Uh, a good show. Action-packed, right, Sean? I mean, got football, moving the basketball. You've got MAC champions already in cross country. That is a positive week, I think, for NIU athletics. Yeah, no question about it. Anytime you win a championship, anytime you – uh, uh, have a progression of growth, uh, it, it, it gets better. You know, we, we, are, we all know we've got some adversity. We all know that uh, uh, things are not quite right in the world relative right now with 2020, but uh, we do have some momentum. Uh, and we're going into holidays and uh, we're doing things that uh, are being thoughtful about one another. You know, we're getting to know the best of one another. And I think that uh, uh, for us right now, it's all about getting better, you know, one day at a time, one game at a time. I agree with uh, Coach Monty, uh, what Tom was talking about, that one and all mentality. You know, you do that, you take care of business, and you move on. So that's the way to look at it right now. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to be thankful for as we start Thanksgiving week here. It's just thankful for having health and family, thankful for having games be played if you're a Husky fan and just having an opportunity. There's so many negatives, as we talked about this year, to have some positive things and to be thankful for what we have. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can have basketball and uh, continue the football season. Uh, great talking to Thomas Hammett. Great talking to Mark Montgomery. And uh, Sean, we get ready for football on Saturday. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, we can get a victory. Uh, until then, I will see you on the sidelines. I'll see you uh, courtside. I'll see you at the combo. And uh, I'll see you in Kalamazoo. You will, you will, Andy. And you have a, a fabulous Thanksgiving, my friend. God bless you and your family. Yeah, thank you. You too. And to all the Husky fans and staff and players, happy Thanksgiving. And, and get some wins. All right? Get some wins over Thanksgiving. Want well, to appreciate, appreciate Thomas Hammock joining us, Mark Montgomery. For Sean T. Frazier, I'm Andy Garcia saying thank you for watching NIU Weekly. We'll talk to you next week. Go Huskies.